Hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, if you're looking to either create your own home or small office network, or you want to add 10 gig to your network, at least a couple of ports, I think I may have found the ideal switch for you to get at a very good price. You'll see the link down below to Amazon. Now, I purchased this myself, so it's not something that this company, Zysel, I believe that's how you pronounce it. It's not something they sent me to do a review on, and I'm not going to really do a formal, detailed review of every different feature of this. That's not my purpose here, because most people are not going to need to know that. If you hang around to the end of the video, you will see some performance tests that I will do on the different types of ports that this particular switch has in it. And just to summarize it, it happens to have eight 1 gig ports, pretty standard, but it also has four 10 gig ports, Three of them can also go down to much less than 10 gig. They're adaptable. They'll automatically sense the speed of whatever you connected them to, and they'll go at 1 gig, 2.5 gig, 5 gig, or 10 gig. One port, the very end one here, though, it's, it's an SFP plus port, which means that it'll only go 10 gig, and you have to have the right SFP plus adapter to it. Now, I happen to have some of these that I port for another purpose. I have a pair of these standard SFP Plus used when you want to use fiber. And for example, here's a, a fiber cable that's about 30 feet long. And it's something I've been thinking about when I do my wiring of my new switch for the internet router and wireless connectivity in my small home office here. And I would run that through the wall between what I envision to be my future virtual machine box that'll have various virtual machines on it, a build that I plan on doing probably within the next year, and use a port on the new router that I purchased that does support SFP plus 10 gig. Well, this also supports SFP plus if you want RJ45. So I got one of these as well. Now, how I will use it here will vary. I bought this switch to extend my network up here to my studio. Right now I have two in-wall ports. One is 10 gig that's connected to my downstairs 10 gig router in my network rack. And the other one is a standard, supposed to be one gig, but since I only have a Cat5 cable, not even Cat5e, it doesn't quite make one gig. It only goes up to about 650 megahertz. So I'm gonna connect this up to the 10 gig port and then use one of these three ports here, which can go you know, up to 10 gig using RJ45 to my main streaming computer here. Plus I'll have two more to play with when I'm doing experiments or testing here in my studio for future videos. The one that is the SFP Plus, I'm not exactly sure exactly how I'm gonna use that yet, but it'll give me the option of testing devices I may have in the future that that is the only way to connect to it. So I'll have that port available. Or I could decide to hook that up to some future extension to somewhere else uh, in my home. But we'll see. I haven't decided that. Not a full review, but it did come with uh, the 12 volt power adapter. Looks like it's a pretty long cable too when I had it open. Probably goes about 10 feet. It has rubber feet. If you wanted to put rubber feet and lie it down on a tabletop, it has spots for them. It also came with a couple of mounting screws that allow you to mount it in, into your walls. It could be either sheetrock or studs, whatever you want to use it for. Now, I'm not going to use that right now. I decided that I'm going to put a shelf under my primary desk here. Now this is a leftover short shelf. It's only six inches in length and the standard 19 inch rack size. This I've had sitting since I last did some upgrades to my rack. So it's really doesn't have a spot down in the rack at this point. So I'm going to take it and mount it to the wall underneath my desk. I may put a two by three board here, which I'll paint the same color as my walls, obviously, as a way to hold this up. And I'll probably also not use these feet because I have better ones that allow me to keep it further off of the, the top of the shelf and thereby give it some more airflow around the switch. The thing does look like it has a fan on it. I'll have to see when I turn it on. I have not plugged this in yet, so I'm not sure exactly you know, whether that is a real fan or not or just a, a position for a future fan. Other than that, it looks like it's pretty compact, nice, fully metal. Not steel, you know, probably an aluminum alloy of some sort. And it seems pretty strong and pretty hefty. We'll see how it does, though, you know, when I'm testing it out. And then as I use it going forward. The way this is going to work is I have to plug it into my network. So I will plug it into one of the 
ports that I have currently, which I have split off right now for a couple of what's supposed to be up to one gig port. And then once it does that, since I have a DHCP server running in my network, it'll go and ask for an address and then it'll get it and assign it to the address of the web GUI that this particular switch has on it. It is manageable through that web GUI and it has some very, very interesting features that I never would have thought on a switch of this size or this cost. It can do VLANs, which allows you to segregate different ports into groupings, thereby being like separate subnets that you can manage separately and isolate from each other. It also has uh, port aggregation, which means you can assign multiple ports to double the throughput, primarily for the one gig ports here, although probably you could do it for the 10 gig as well, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to test that. So if you don't, if you don't have a 10 gig network, you can actually take you know, two of these ports and run them to the same switch or router and thereby double its potential throughput. It also has the capability of doing mirroring. So you can take one of these ports and you can mirror it onto another port and then you can use that to monitor all traffic that goes on with that port. And it has other features as well that I'll show you once I get into the GUI. Let me start by plugging this in and then getting into the GUI and seeing what happens and what I can get to. By the way, just to let you know that there is a software tool that the vendor Zeisel has available on their website. Uh, it's supposed to be able to search out your router on the network for you because if it's DHCP like mine, you know, it's going to have to get an address and where that address is picked is really up to my router. Now what I'm going to do is probably just go into my router and look at the DHCP table and I should be able to identify the new port that this thing grabs. But if you don't want to get to that level, you could try using the tool and I'll see how that works. I'll try to add that to my testing on this particular switch. Okay, here we go. Got it on the table here. Let me plug the power connector into this and I'll plug the other end of it into an outlet and we'll see what happens. Oop, I see it blinking here. I believe the instruction said when it's blinking, it's doing some kind of activity. And now the ports are all lighting up or at least temporarily they lit up as part of the initialization. Looks pretty good. Looks like it's got some good signs here. Okay, it looks like it has finished its initialization. The light has turned to a solid green, which the manual said that means it's done. Let me connect up a connection to the existing network. I'll use one of the one gig ones and look, I see activity starting to happen. Hopefully it's gathering its DHCP address right now and I'll be able to see it when I look at the list of assigned DHCPs on my existing network switch. I'll show that up on the screen right now. And there we go. I see an address that it is actually assigned to the device identified as client name XGS 1250 12. Now, that address that I have there that I'm showing on the screen is not going to be what it's going to stay at. I have a specific set of arranges of static addresses that I use when I'm connecting up devices to my network that are network related. That's one thing that I will wind up changing. And I'll see if I can show that once I get into the web GUI. So let's go ahead and open up the web GUI that should be at that address. Okay, I typed in the address that was issued in my, by my DHCP server and it came right up. So let me go ahead and put the default password, which according to the quick start guide is one, two, three, four, and I'll sign in. It's asking me for a new password, so I'll go ahead and change that now. Now it's asking me to sign in with that password again. And there we are. We're inside of the management uh, GUI of this particular router. Not gonna get into a lot of detail here, but uh, if you go into system, I believe we could actually come in and change the device name to whatever we want. There is a firmware that I believe is newer than this according to uh, what I found online. So I'll go ahead and upgrade that. This is the current address that's assigned to the IP. That's gonna be changed. And uh, let me see, what else can I look at here? Under, I'll switch over to the right-hand side. You can set up your VLANs if you wanted to do that. It's not a super sophisticated version of uh, VLAN configuration, but it looks like it might work for some special applications or at least small applications that you may want to do. Here's the link aggregation. You get to pick which, which ports are linked together. The mirroring, which allows you to actually monitor a port. The quality of service, which allows you to assign different ports a higher priority in terms of how much bandwidth they will get. You also got IGMP snooping, which is an advanced feature that I'm not going to get into here. Let me look at management. It is set for DHCP. I'm going to be turning that off to a fixed address. 
you have a choice of disabling that. And then you can assign, um, in this particular screen under management, things like the new IP address, new subnet mask, new gateway. By the way, all of that will be changing when I redo my internal router. You can actually uh, change it from HTTPS to HDregular HTTP. And uh, those are some of the features that you can have here in this particular menu. So I think it's uh, pretty full featured. If you ever want to make changes to it, you just got to make sure you remember what this address is or just go look in your router table. In a quick video I'll do as a follow-up to this one, I'll show you once I have it installed. As I looked at it further, one thing I did want to spend some time, which I show here, is getting the quality of service appropriately adjusted. I decided that I needed to prioritize the higher end ports, in particular the 10 gig ports, because those are going to be for the high throughput stuff, including the connection to the downstairs switch. Okay, here I have it hooked up. I have connected to it one, one gig port over here on port 3. I have a 2.5 gig port over on port 9. I have a 10 gig on port 10. And this is the upstream 10 gig, the one that's going to the other switch here on port 11. And I'm going to put these feet on it instead. These will give me a rise of about 3 quarters of an inch so that I can put it on that little tabletop and get plenty of airflow underneath of it. Okay, let's run this Zycel Zon tool and see if it can pick out the router for us in terms of where it's located in the network. I want to allow it, yes. I keep getting this error, but it doesn't seem to be loading it down a new one, so I'll just skip it for now. It's scanning. And it found it. It actually found the, uh, the switch. The Zizel XGS 1250-12 switch was located and at the proper IP address as well. So you can use this tool, download it from the link below, and uh, install it on your PC and it should work fine. An alternative way rather than going through your configuration for DHCP. This is a screen capture of what the status looks like within the web GUI after it's been run for a few minutes with the ports that I currently have connected. As you can see, it gives a lot of great information here on this screen if it's something you're interested in. Let me go ahead now and do some quick testing of the throughput and see what it comes out as. Now for the performance results, starting with the performance of the 1 gig connection, then moving on to a 2.5 gig connection, and then finally a 10 gig connection. And then in this chart here, I summarize all of them together in one place. Thank you.